Let's start by going through the component parts of the OVI. Now it's important to remember, don't get frightened by any of these terms even if they're new to you. The first component part is open interest. Open interest represents the number of options contracts that are open at any time. I'll go into that into more detail a bit later. The next component part to the OVI is option volume. This represents the number of option contracts that are being traded between buyers and sellers every day. And the final component part of the OVI is implied volatility. As I said earlier, this is a measure of how expensive options are being priced in the markets. So, as I said before, even if these terms are new to you, just relax. You don't need to know what makes up these terms or the complexities therein. Now, before we do a very, very basic few minutes on options, I just want to talk to you about the rule of the opposites, as I call it. With options and with trading in general, if it isn't one thing, it must be the opposite. So, the opposite of to buy is to sell. The opposite of up is down. The opposite of a call is a put. It's as simple as that. So let's now go through the definition of an option. An option is defined as the right, not the obligation, to buy or sell an asset at a fixed price before a predetermined date. We're going to focus right now on to buy or sell an asset. A call is an option to buy. A put must therefore be an option to sell. You see the rule of the opposites. Let's look at call options. A call is an option to buy. The call buyer wants the stock price to go up. So when you think of a call option, think of calling up a friend. You want the stock price to go up. The put option will be exactly the opposite. A put option is an option to sell. When we buy put options, we want the stock to go down. That's how we make our money. Think of a put option as putting down the phone. You put down the phone, you want the stock price to go down in order to make money from buying puts. Let's now look at the outlook we have when we buy options. When we buy a call, we're bullish, i.e. we want the stock price to go up. That's how we make our money when we buy a call option. Think in math terms of plus plus equals plus. You remember that from school. When we buy a put, we are bearish. It's the complete opposite. If you think of buying being plus and selling equals minus, and if you think of a call being plus and a put being minus, when we buy a put, the buy is a plus, the put is a minus, plus minus equals a minus. That's what we learned at school. So when we sell a put option, we are doing a minus minus. Selling is minus, a put is minus. Minus minus equals plus. When we sell a put option, we're neutral to bullish. And when we sell a call option, we're neutral to bearish. Selling equals minus, call equals plus, minus plus equals minus. We're neutral to bearish. That's just a simple way of understanding what our bias is when we buy or sell calls or puts. The next part of the option definition was at a fixed price. By this, we mean the strike price or the exercise price. This is the price at which we would buy or sell the shares if we choose to exercise our right to do so. It's important to remember that the strike price is not the option premium and is not the underlying asset price. It is the price at which we will buy or sell the shares if we choose to exercise our right to buy in the case of calls or our right to sell in the case of puts. Don't worry, we'll come on to that later. And in any case, this is not an options course anyway, it's just good background knowledge. Let's look at the strike price in the context of calls first. When a call is called in the money, it's where the stock price is greater than the strike price. Where a call is deemed at the money, it's where the stock price is equal to the strike price. And where a call is deemed out of the money, it's where the stock price is lower than the strike price. Let's now look at it with puts. Where a put is deemed in the money, it's the opposite of a call. I.e. with a call, it was where the stock price was greater than the strike price. With a put, it's where the stock price is less than the strike price. When a put is deemed at the money, it's where the stock price equals the strike price, or very close to. And where a put is deemed out of the money, it's where the stock price is greater than the strike price. Again, that is the opposite to what the call was.